by thanking the organizers, uh, especially Klaus, for um, this conference and the opportunity to present here. Um, I would also like to give really special thanks to the IIP and the staff here, especially Mr. Steven Batista at Rafael Lemos, uh, we, uh, who have given me wonderful support. I, uh, I'm traveling with uh, my two small kids, and there's a lot of logistics associated, and their help is greatly appreciated. Uh, okay, so now that I've thanked, given my thank yous, I need to apologize. Uh, the, this workshop is called Finite Systems in Non-Equilibrium. My talk is mostly in infinite systems and in equilibrium. Uh, I, the, the fact that we use an approach that studies, uh, considers infinite systems, I believe um, a lot of the effects will still survive in small code atom systems, which are the systems we have in mind, uh, and uh, such properties like mod insulator effects, things correlated uh, uh, states have can have been observed in finite systems. And uh, while I'll talk mostly about equilibrium physics, I will, I will at the end point towards possible interesting non-equilibrium directions. And uh, my talk does talk about, uh, contain the physics of strong correlated systems. Okay, and uh, I, I want to also make a quick advertisement. So uh, my a recent interest in non-equilibrium dynamics uh, is better, uh, will be better uh, presented in this talk on Friday by my graduate student, Jing Zhang, who is in the audience, and uh, so that will be on Friday. Okay, so for this talk, I will, uh, this is done in collaboration with uh, Chen Yan Lai, who was a graduate student in my group, is now at, at Los Alamos, Wang Ming, uh, Huang, who was a postdoc in my group and is now a professor in Taiwan, will briefly talk about work done with Filippos Kironomos, who was a postdoc in my group I and now is doing research in Max Delbruck Center in Berlin. Uh, David Campbell from BU is a longtime collaborator, and Shane Kelly is a current graduate student. Okay, the outline. Uh, I, want, I will first just introduce the main motivation, the key questions that we are addressing, uh, then talk about the actual system, which is, will be mixtures of fermions. Um, we'll focus on two uh, specific uh, systems. One is uh, how to create density wave states with non-zero angular momentum, and also systems, mixtures of uh, system uh, uh, components that live in different dimensions. Okay, to start, let me start with uh, just the simplest uh, interacting fermion model, the Herbert model, uh, an SU2, so two spin species, and uh, so this is hopping, chemical potential, and just on-site interaction. This is well known, have been studied for many decades, just briefly mentioned, so uh, we are um, considering two dimensions, uh, and generically uh, for a weak, repulsive interaction, we have a Fermi liquid uh, state, and for attractive interaction, the, the if, if U is negative, there is pairing. This corresponds to BCS pairing the S wave state, okay? So L equals zero state. At half filling, a, a square lattice in two dimensions, there is nesting the Fermi s of the Fermi surface. The Fermi surface looks like this diamond. Uh, and in that case, um, uh, there is this density wave states at positive U, so half filling means uh, on average one particle per site. So if they repel each other and there is uh, one particle per site, here's a cartoon of what would happen. Uh, you have up, this would be the, the classical ground state that uh, 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 just to have a visual picture, this would be up and down, up and down. Um, so just to minimize this term, one would have one particle per site, and, um, but now uh, opposite spins is um, uh, favored so that they can do virtual hops back and forth that further decrease the energy. And for attractive 
uh, interaction, then there is this checkerboard pattern where two particles uh, then prefer to uh, uh, sit on the same side. And this can be understood from the nesting of the Fermi surfaces. Here are some, po some possible processes. We can take two particles from this side, put it on this side. Uh, these uh, um, momentum change is pi pi, so the overall change in momentum here is 2 pi 2 pi, which is a reciprocal lattice vector, so these are allowed processes. Uh, I'm pointing this out because I'm com I will come back to these, um, uh, the row plate by these type of processes. Okay, so, um, so this is all well-known physics. The question, uh, I will start with one very specific question and then we'll uh, um, maybe see it in a broader context. But the first question is, can we have a Fermi, um, Fermi or Hubbard model with only one side repulsion, something that is uh, achievable in current cold atom experiments. S and um, so the just the on-site repulsion is comes naturally from the uh, existence of an optical lattice. Okay, so with nothing else, no, uh, can we have a, the appearance of a density wave phase or a BCS phase for, um, um, with non-zero angular momentum, okay? Uh, superconducting or pairing states with non-zero angular, non angular momentum have been studied a lot in um, condensed matter systems, have been observed in many materials, um, the, uh, but the non-zero density wave states, while studied theoretically, uh, have not been really observed in, um, uh, in many systems. Okay, perhaps only in 1D system there's some P-wave uh, bond order. But, uh, so here's a proposal of how to create this um, P-wave or D-wave density wave states in a cold atom system. Okay. Uh, so uh, our uh, proposal would be that this, the, to, uh, we answer this question in the positive, that this is possible. Only on-site repulsion, uh, everything short range, yet we can have uh, um, non-zero angular momentum uh, density wave. And we will, um, we're inspired by these experiments where one looks at mixtures of two fermions and uh, each species having, coming with uh, S, uh, uh, two hyperfine components. So it's like two S to two fermions. Um, so uh, along this line, so the answer will lie on the fact that uh, even though the uh, bear, the, the, the starting microscopic Hamiltonian is only on-site repulsion. Once you have mixtures, one, can, one species can mediate long-range attraction among the other species and will then investigate what happens both away from half filling, perhaps look at how this long-range attraction um, lead to uh, non-zero angular momentum um, BCS states and also density wave states are half filled. Okay, so that's what we uh, will set out to do first. Very a simple and clear question. So uh, we consider now uh, two species, we call this C and F. Um, so this is just a simple Huber model for each, and then, so HC and HF. And here's the interaction term, which is again, just on site. Okay, so they live on the same lattice, uh, you can have uh, contact uh, U for C, for F, and the uh, interspecies U as well. So that's the, the, the model. And uh, everything is repulsive, and again, all on site. And we'll be working on the weak coupling limit where these interactions are smaller than the, the bandwidth set by the non-interacting part. Okay? W is uh, something that uh, of order T. Okay, and we'll uh, investigate the dependence on different fillings as one can cha change the uh, chemical potential. Okay, so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, so let me, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I seem to have the wrong version of this. Uh, I apologize. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I, I think I opened the wrong version of this. Okay, no, it's 
All right. So, um, okay. So, all right. So we have um, the problem of uh, interacting uh, fermion system. Uh, how are we going to solve the question of interactions? The method we are going to use is the RG analysis. Uh, just briefly, the the idea is that uh, I start with a the no interacting um, part of the Hamiltonian in which the fermions can fill a certain um, uh, okay the slides are not going through sorry uh, oh okay. Sorry, the <laughs> it's not going forward or backward. Uh, let me try to disconnect. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry about that. So, um, Okay, great. So, um, so, okay, so this is the, the Hamiltonian. In order to treat the interactions, we follow this uh, RG approach. The idea is to have um, uh, start with a non-interacting system, which is just have a field Fermi surface, and now uh, um, would add interactions and systematically integrate out uh, high energy degrees of freedom. The idea is that um, if you're interested in uh, ground state properties, then um, uh, one can, at the end, uh, keep only the low energy states. So there is a, a, a well-defined mathematical procedure for that, in which we take the energy cutoff uh, that started as the whole bandwidth, and one would systematically go down. As we go down, the different uh, effective parameters in the Hamiltonian change, and one can follow the equations to see how they change. And as we take this process further, we would see uh, where the system flows to. That's just a general RG idea. I won't go into the, the technical details, but that's a well-established um, method. And uh, in particular, if you have some um, generic Fermi surface, one uh, discretizes it and follows and labels each uh, uh, position in the Fermi surface with a, a discrete path, and we can take... Uh, uh, then keep track of all the possible processes around the Fermi surface and follow their flow at one loop. These are the uh, diagrams that uh, contribute. Okay, so this will be the method we'll be using. Uh, and here is the result. Okay, so here is, remember the two species uh, Hubbard model. Here we are keeping one of the species, the F species, uh, at half filling, so zero chemical potential. The on-site interaction between the two, uh, uh, the, uh, the intraspecies interaction, 
between the sea, among the C's and among the F's are set to be the same. That's not the key to what we're studying here. And the experiments, they may be different. And we'll, we'll choose to be something uh, a little bit less than P. Uh, and here is the, the phase diagram that has, uh, um, uh, uh, we found uh, here three phases. So we can look at, um, at, at first, uh, if you have the, the other species also at half filling, then we are along mu c equals zero. Here what happens is, uh, it can be uh, understood quite simply. If the inter species coupling is zero, then you just have two independent copies of the Hubbard model. In that case, we have the, the S wave, spin and C wave model uh, we discussed before, simple Hubbard model, okay? And as we increase the in uh, their species coupling, then uh, they, this repulsion between the two species becomes large, right? And in that case, the two species, uh, le let's take that to infinity, then they absolutely want to avoid each other. So what you have is that they, they will, will, um, there will be some cost, but they would prefer then to sit, uh, the, the pairs of the same species to sit and then make checkerboards with respect to the other. If you, if you can imagine each species as being uh, uh, on different layers, um, they don't want to uh, sit on top of each other, so they would just avoid each other. But if they are uh, both at half filling, they are both uh, going to be in checkerboard um, pattern, but with a pi phase in between, shifted by one side. So this is the S plus minus uh, CD dot. This S plus minus uh, uh, BCS pairing has been observed in um, uh, iron nictite superconductors. This will be a, an analogy in the density wave phase. Okay, two S wave, two simple S wave uh, density waves, but shifted by pi. Okay, so that's also uh, pretty well understood. Now, uh, the surprise comes when we start doping the, um, the uh, one of the fermions away from half filling. So here, uh, when uh, one of the, you start depleting one of the phases, start from these two uh, alternated uh, checkerboard patterns, and now you allow one of them to, uh, um, uh, to go away from half filling. And we then enter this D wave charge and C wave. This is just comes from the numerics. And so I will spend some time uh, talking about uh, our understanding of why that happens. And then one can imagine going from uh, uh, having both away from half filling. Okay. So let me start from uh, just characterizing this phase a little bit. So what do we mean by that? So the density wave um, uh, um, instability is um, described by um, in the charge sector by couplings of this form where you have uh, exchanges uh, by this Q vector which is a nesting vector pi pi. Okay, so in a simple uh, one species Huber model at half filling, when we look at these uh, couplings, one can write then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, um, uh, this is a, uh, this coupling now depends on two momenta. These momenta are these uh, indices that have been discretized around the Fermi surfaces. So this is really, uh, so if I have 36 patches, this is a 36 by 36 matrix. So that's my CDW matrix. I have one for each uh, species. Uh, at the end of the flow, the different uh, elements of these matrices will have uh, changed uh, due to the uh, RG procedure. And now, uh, in order to determine the symmetry, uh, the dominant symmetry of this in this channel, I just diagonalize this matrix. And uh, here is what we find for the uh, eigenvalue, uh, for the eigenvector with the larger eigenvalue when I diagonalize this matrix. Okay, so you see. Uh, it, the eigenvector is a 36-component uh, vector, and here is plotted what we find. And it just comes out from the method that this has dxy symmetry. Uh, and uh, if I uh, see what this 
means, as these are the patches, as I go around, this means positive, negative, positive, negative, um, uh, in this fashion. So I'm just describing what we got from the, uh, just running this, um, doing this analysis, uh, but uh, uh, we can translate that into a real space picture, and this, uh, there is um, some, in, uh, some very nice pedagogical uh, treatment in this um, TRB uh, here. Uh, this corresponds in real space to a, checker, uh, a pattern like this. So say the blue are uh, a higher probability, so the, the particles, instead of sitting in different uh, positions in some alternate way, like in a checkerboard pattern, here, what they are doing uh, is that they are living in these bonds, these diagonal bonds, more often in the blue bonds than in the red bonds. Okay, that uh, is the dxy uh, density wave uh, from uh, Fourier uh, 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 transforming this to this to real space. Okay, so now we have uh, particles that uh, we can imagine hopping back and forth in this diagonal. So that's an interesting uh, uh, ordered phase where, um, uh, where is the, this uh, hopping uh, probability that is enhanced and uh, staggered. Okay, so again, so this is what, uh, uh, what came out and what that uh, uh, region in the phase diagram represent. But uh, so now um, we just ran the, the program and that's what we got. Can we get some analytical understanding? And it turns out uh, that there is a very simple explanation. So let's go back to why there is a charge density wave to start with. Um, we can understand this problem by using this very uh, minimal four-patch model. Okay, so going back again to a single species, when, when look at the charge density wave channel, if I only have these four patches, one, two, three, four, then I only have a few of these processes. I'm calling this G1, this G2, and G3 is like G1, but uh, the green arrow goes this way, the uh, orange arrow goes backward. So these are only the only possible ways. Um, and uh, notice that four, is a, I, I drew the patch four here, but it's the same as this one. So that was one of the uh, pictures I showed earlier where you have an arrow across this two parallel faces and another across these parallel two faces. But I just chose to draw this patch here in the next uh, brilliant zone. Okay. So these are the only things we have. If I translate this uh, generic function into these three couplings, then this is the matrix I have, a four by four matrix. When I diagonalize, these are the eigen um, uh, vectors for that two of the four eigenvectors I, I get. I'm focusing on these two. This one has S-wave symmetry. This one sees a change of sign and has D-wave symmetry. And if I look at the eigenvalues, this is what I get for the two. And in, uh, 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 okay. in, uh, uh, in one species uh, case, if I write down the RG equations, I just have, uh, the coupling is changing with just this first term here. Okay, forget these extra terms. These are will ap appear when I have two species. So in that case, if I have a um, a G, the a coupling that starts repulsive, then these, uh, uh, as um, the RG procedure goes, these uh, Gs will increase. So the G, the L, G is positive, will have positive. Uh, contributions, and that, that's the flow, and if I look at uh, all these guys um, uh, uh, flowing, there is, uh, uh, they all go symmetrically, and it's the S wave uh, that is the dominant one. So that's the usual case. So what happens if I have two species? Now I have to consider uh, these terms as well. Okay, so if I have two species, um, then um, First, uh, these uh, additional terms are uh, cases in which I have C particles, say, coming in and out, and in between they, they 
can be mediated. There's a bubble for the F fermions in the middle. So these uh, terms, the, the, these, these coefficients B, the, the, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Th these coefficients B here are all negative. Okay. So you can see that if I um, started out, uh, let's say both species that have filling, uh, you have the, the usual case. This, uh, um, and as I, uh, uh, if I start with a negative G, then this is the one that flows to the charge density wave um, with S wave. Now, um, if I have uh, now uh, the coupling, so these terms start out non-zero, I have, um, uh, so I'm sorry, Let, let's start with a repulsive case in which these ones, these terms would flow po to positive values, so a spin density wave, but now if I add the interspecies coupling, they all contribute with a minus sign and they will eventually lead to uh, charge density wave. S wave, charge density wave, if they are both at half filling. Now, if they are, if one of them is slightly away from half filling, then let's see what happens. Then, uh, well, first of all, this process here, the one I call G1, uh, at some point when it's, uh, it, it's not going to be allowed anymore, because now when I uh, add these two um, momentum exchange, they uh, don't satisfy a reciprocal lattice vector anymore. There's a little piece missing. Okay, that's true for the G1 and the G3. So those start to drop out of the picture. Now for G2, uh, see the G2 would be here and across. But across, as I said, this can be drawn here. So if one of them, say the red uh, one, the, the one that is away from half filling, now is missing a small piece, I can easily compensate that by adding a small piece on the green one. Okay, so there is a big phase space in which I can continue to decrease the Fermi surface of uh, the one of the species, the C particles, and because the, the other species has these long parallel lines, uh, they, they can, this can compensate by adding, making this arrow larger and larger, uh, spanning um, almost, uh, uh, well, uh, for, for a big portion. So for that reason, uh, then these equations simplify here. So essentially I drop the G1 and G3 terms. They don't satisfy moment conservation anymore, but I do still have the G2 squared term. So now if I start with original Gs all positive, and uh, which would lead to spin density wave, uh, now uh, this term Remember the Bs are negative, they are mediated interactions, and, um, and these uh, will lead the interaction into uh, the attractive uh, limit. Attractive means charge density wave, but now this charge density wave is, uh, only picks out some special directions. It is not isotropic among all the Gs. So I end up with... Uh, uh, negative G1, G1 it has this large negative term, so it's being driven to be attractive, charge density wave, but the G2 term continues to be positive. It just continues the same way. So if I have G1 negative and G2 positive, that favors this uh, lowering of this eigenvalue. Okay, so that's the reason for D wave uh, being um, uh, the dominant one. So relatively simple and very robust mechanism. So it may appear in uh, solid state systems where in which you have multibands as long as they are uh, close to nesting and have these long parallel sectors one may be lucky to get a D wave uh, from this mechanism but uh, now that we have this understanding we can actually look at our full RG flow where we have all the possible couplings and uh, verify that this is indeed happening uh, here is uh, I just of all the, the many couplings that are flowing, I can just look at uh, this one, these are the dashed line, and uh, this one. And we see that uh, when they are both at half filling, they are both running negative. There is a dashed line and a solid line going to the attractive limit, the usual S wave CDW case. 
uh, when, when one of them is slightly away from half filling, this flow is a little slower, and one of them, uh, this one, the G2 case, uh, uh, continues being positive. So overall negative, CDW, but the symmetry is D wave. Okay, so, uh, but we have uh, all the, uh, the man all the patches, that uh, all the process processes we want. So here is another view of what is going on. So if I, I have the various patches around the Fermi surface, I fix one of them to be uh, to be fixed and look at the dependence. Uh, uh, if this is a um, uh, a plot of the magnitude of this uh, coupling. So here are some uh, secondary processes, and here you can see these processes here uh, going positive, this going negative. Uh, this is when the D wave um, instability happens. Generically here, just to show that we have the all this information, here would be a case where they are all negative. This is the case where all the S wave CDW is a dominant. Here's the D wave CDW, where there's a change in sign, and here is the, um, the spin Nancy wave, and the system re remains repulsive. Um, okay. So, um, okay, then now what happens if we move away, both, move both particles away from half filling? Uh, initially, uh, we were here at uh, the F fermions fixed at half filling, and we had this transition from the charge density wave to the spin density wave. Uh, um, uh, uh, through this intermediate new phase that was the, the, the real surprise. And now if um, both are um, uh, doped away from half filling, and you still have this mediation leading to uh, long-range attractive interaction, eventually uh, there's no more nesting effects of any type, but still a mediated attractive interaction, then superconductivity will be the dominant one. So very interesting phase diagram on a very simple system, just um, simple Hubbard models, but with more components. Uh, just um, uh, what about um, uh, the, the energy scales? Will these have reasonable energy scales to be seen experimentally. So here, are, uh, this is the energy scale or, or critical temperature at which the transition should appear. In our analysis, is when the divergences happen. And we find uh, ratios, um, e e uh, it depends really on the, uh, the, st the strength of the interaction. It's being dri driven by this coupling. So increases with the coupling, and uh, if we focus on the D wave um, region, and the, this presumably can be uh, tuned by tuning the optical lattice that is holding the C and F. Uh, uh, if one tunes uh, s these parameters by the two different lattices and they are superposed, then uh, just add, uh, uh, perhaps adding one Feshbach resonance, one can then additionally tune the interspecies coupling. Okay, so uh, w if there is ability to tune that, then there is uh, one can reach reasonable uh, uh, transition temperatures of the order of 10% of the Fermi energy. So that's the proposal. Uh, just a few words, I'm not going in detail on the, uh, about this, but uh, it seems that there is hope. So these um, mixtures have been uh, obtained uh, uh, and cooled down uh, by an experimental group. Uh, one would then have to load them on square lattice. And uh, the fact that they have different masses is fine. So, but one can, uh, so nothing depends on that. Uh, and uh, there are um, special resonances that are available for these two species, uh, and that this ratio could be tuned to go through the transition. And then there are also um, uh, questions about if we realize this, uh, uh, um, uh, then this D wave, density wave, how one could uh, measure it. 
uh, for that experiment, uh, so perhaps some uh, in spectroscopy measurements. One have to be sensitive to phase in order to uh, determine that is D-wave. Okay, but let me move on. And uh, the second part, uh, five minutes, okay. This one is very brief. It just trying to broaden this idea that um, one can use one species to then mediate int rich interactions uh, among the other species and then use that to create new uh, states. Uh, here we are motivated by these experiments where one have, um, in this case, these are bosons, but uh, one species living in one dimension, in a given dimension, and the other in a different dimension. Okay, so this would be 2D uh, pancakes that are um, immersed in a 3D uh, gas. So here we then envision having our 2D fermions in a lattice that we like, uh, then immersed in a 3D either gas or, la uh, or on a lattice, either fermions and bosons. This is not very crucial. The, crucial, uh, the only thing important here is that by having these other uh, species uh, um, surrounding it, and it, it has its own land scales. So we can tune that land scale to, to either match or not match the land scales on the fermions, and this way tune uh, different um, uh, pieces of the interaction to be important. Okay, so the idea is to that one can uh, uh, use that as a mediator. So the idea is to have a free fermions in uh, 3D, 2D, I'm sorry, plus the Hubbard term. So that just comes from the lattice. A three-dimensional system that the w I didn't specify very well, but it doesn't really, it's not crucial if it's fermions or bosons. Uh, if, if it's fermions, the nice advantage, only nice advantage is that you would have a Fermi surface that introduces that, uh, this interesting, and uh, um, uh, also scale in this mediation. And the interaction, again, is just contact interaction. So uh, here we are not treating the whole system in a, um, this RG analysis. We're doing something a bit more simple and just integrating them all perturbatively, integrating this uh, surrounding um, uh, species, and then creating, uh, looking at the mediated interaction. So we need these, uh, this coupling to be small compared to the 3D um, uh, hopping. Also, uh, this interaction is frequency dependent, so it's a retarded interaction. If we want to neglect retardation, we also need to assume that the 3D particles move much faster than the 2D particles if we want to do that. Uh, so uh, uh, just two more slides. Uh, here is one typical uh, form of the interaction. Uh, so uh, I, took we t I took this mediated interaction, now looking in real space that translates into an on-site contribution, which is the major contribution, again, attractive, and the nearest neighbor, next to your neighbors, and uh, all the high, um, more long-range terms decay pretty quickly. The, the key point here is that uh, this attraction here, the on-site one, is definitely largest uh, and decays along distances. So it doesn't seem like it would give anything by itself. It would just give you S-wave scattering. But remember, there is a Hubbard, uh, naturally a repulsive term already in the Hamiltonian. So one can tune so that the S-wave terms uh, cancel out. These terms here, they are small compared... Uh, because it's perturbative in T3, but, but for the, from the point of view of the 2D fermions, uh, what I need is of this to be sizable compared to T2, the, uh, the kinetic energy of the two-dimensional particles. So there is some freedom to cancel out this large part and still make these terms large compared to the hopping of the 2D particles. Okay? So uh, that is the, the main idea. And if one does that, cancel out the S-way part, which uh, has a natural repulsive term, one can then um, uh, use the filling, the density of the 3D particles to really tune the interaction. Uh, here is uh, the tuning the density of the uh, 2D particles. Here is half filling. Here is um, uh, going away from half filling. Uh, and there is uh, P-wave pairing, D-wave pairing, 
uh, and the post have been a charge and sway due to the attraction. So um, that is um, the the uh, the general picture is that one can use this um, to to tune the interaction. And again, uh, some um, uh, uh, comment on the energy scales. Here is uh, uh, with some filling uh, fixed at this uh, chemical potential. That's a relatively circular Fermi surface at this point. One can go through this region and see how the energy scales that are uh, needed uh, depend uh, on mu3. So as we change the density of the mediators, there is an optimal pl place for the transition temperature that of the order of 15% of um, the bandwidth. Okay, so uh, and in conclusion, uh, the key point of this uh, work is to investigate mixtures and mediated interactions. We found the possibility of creating perhaps a D-wave charge density waves in uh, mixtures of fermions, uh, and also uh, I propose using mixed dimensions to engineer various long-range interactions. Uh, I talked briefly about, uh, I only mentioned that uh, in this, everything I talked here, we uh, are not taking into account the fact that the uh, mediator may uh, take some time to, uh, to propagate and connect, so there's a really a retarded interaction, and in this case, um, uh, the couplings themselves depend on frequency, so uh, these kind of questions we investigated in the past in a more generic context, and this can also be exploited. And uh, non-equilibrium effects, um, uh, this open new questions of uh, what happens if um, the two species have very different time scales, if uh, the coupling can be time dependent, with a sudden crunch, crunch or uh, slowly um, turned on questions about entanglement between the two species, thermalization issues. Uh, so I think that it uh, does open uh, the door for a lot of non interesting non-equilibrium effects.